Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Hugo Correa and um, I want to show you something really cool that we did in this project. Uh, so we finished this beautiful apartment. Now it's uh, ready for sale. Hopefully we'll sell it soon. But I want to show you the steps that we took to paint it, right? So um, we're going to take a section uh, of the living room uh, to do this demonstration. And these are the, the common steps that I normally take. What you see in my hand right now is a, a sanding tool. Yeah, it's called the Aero Sender. It's a really cool thing, and we want to start by cleaning the surfaces. So you want to, if you're painting walls, you want to go ahead and do a little bit of a sanding on the walls to make sure that you get all those uh, drops of paint out. You get, um, you know, all the spider webs away. And if you have some dirt, it's just time for you to kind of do some cleaning and all that to prepare the surface so you don't have to uh, see all your paint falling off later on, especially if you're not using like high quality paint. So the Aero Sander is a tool that is made by Worcester, a company that is 100% uh, American, all made over here, really cool company. And uh, I have the, the privilege of using some of their tools. So uh, it's a really cool company I've been using for decades now. So um, the Aero Sander uh, has this uh, hoop, uh, hook and loop um, kind of mechanism. So you will actually kind of attach this the sandpaper or your uh, cleaning uh, wool over there, your cleaning pad to it. And with this uh, type of um, attachment, this is the Sherlock GT convertible. You can actually have some sort of like a pro fast way of attaching your um, professional tools. So if you want to swap from having, let's like, say, your, your cleaner uh, to your uh, roller frame, you can actually do it without uh, the, the need of rolling. But, uh, in, you know, in many cases, uh, you may not have this type of uh, attachment so don't get frustrated because you can actually just screw it into a regular extension so although this one is from Worcester as well this one is designed for use the common application and use the common uh, roller frames that you will buy at the store so it's a really cool tool uh, I wanted to show you because uh, not only I can use this to clean the, the walls and take all the spider webs out but you can actually just kind of vacuum this thing you don't need to rinse it they don't recommend to rinse the, 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 the pad over here. And, you know, you go ahead and clean the floors if you have wood dust or things like that or the spider webs on the, or the dust from the wall. So it's a really cool thing, and I encourage you to do that. Now, um, an important thing when you're doing any type of this work, you want to go ahead and remove all the plates from the walls. Um, you notice that I'm not putting any type of tape on the base molding. Is that because we're going to... Go ahead and, and clean it really well, do a little bit of sanding and, and, and do some uh, base molding touch up. So that, that will be afterwards. Uh, sometimes when you don't paint the, the uh, base molding, you want to go ahead and put some uh, painter's tape. So those little drops of uh, paint will not bother you at the end and it will be you know looking nice and fresh. Um, but I mean, you want to go ahead and clean those things anyway. You want to use a duster or a nice brush so you can brush off all the dust that collects on those edges. So you want to go ahead and do some uh, sanding. And again, uh, make sure that, you know, once you finish with that, you go ahead and put your your uh, cleaning pad. And, you know, once in a while, you, you want to go ahead and shake it on the on the floor, on your uh, uh, drop clothes, on your, you know, your painting uh, covers. And, um, you know, your surface will be you know, better off right now than, than before, because especially if you have like high gloss paint or glossy paint, you want to make sure that the surfaces is going to um, receive uh, and adhere to the new paint, right? So, okay, that's the first part. Obviously, you want to go ahead and start doing the cutting. So I'm using um, two tools from Worcester again. Uh, this is a two inch uh, angle brush and the Pelican uh, paint tray, I will say. This is a, um, a hand, um, Pen tray or hand pan, and um, the, the good thing about it is that besides the strong, you can actually have these little um, covers that go inside. They are, um, you know, uh, you can throw them away. I normally keep them for a long time, but they are really convenient. And in the Worcester uh, brushes, I this one is about a year old, so I I take care of the brushes. If you rinse them really well, I have some videos where I show you how to take care of the brushes and how to keep it nice, but if you notice, the, the brush uh, looks uh, used, but but you know it is always nice and clean and and well protected. So you know it's it's also good. You notice that actually I'm able to attach 
the, the brush against the, the handle, I will say, where I'm going to put my hand, and that's because they have some sort of magnet there. So it's really good because your brush is not always going to be full of paint on a regular tray. And I have a, a video where I compare the, the other um, kind of uh, hand pens that you use, and these things are, are uncomfortable. So here's my technique to do the edges on the, you know, against other surfaces. I go ahead and apply to, you know, in a close proximity, some paint. Um, so in this case, I leave like half inch uh, space. And now that I know that I have paint on the surface, I go ahead and, and I control the brush easier. I can actually do long stretches of uh, straight uh, lines instead of me, you know, going back and forth and trying to do stuff. And then after that, once you see how much paint you have on the surface, you want to go ahead and just fill it up a little bit more. Don't worry about the 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 paint um, brush kind of marks because um, we want to go ahead and use a small four inch roller and take care of those uh, small uh, uh, marks or you know brush marks and and the idea is that with the roller you can actually use a thicker coat and you don't have to go back and forth and do another cutting around because see, that that takes a long time if you need to cut your, your edges twice, that that will, you know, uh, take away hours of work just by doing that. And I learned that with these little uh, rollers, you can actually get really close to the edge on top, and that's pretty much where you need to do that um, little extra thickening of, of your, your paint. That's where it gets um, like that. And especially in this case that we're using a, a color that is really similar to the one that was on the wall before, and that will help us. I like these tranquil designs and and you know, uh, peaceful colors to, to, you know, when I'm planning to sell properties. And this is a beautiful color. It's called um, Vanilla Sugar. And it's really good. So, you know, if you want to use it, uh, that's the reference. Um, what else I can tell you about that stuff? Uh, that's the cool thing when you do some sort of voice off after you do that. Um, let's let's go ahead and work on the, on the base molding. I want to show you. You see that we want to go ahead and clean that edge because we don't want all that dust that falls down. So, if you have like an older, uh, an older brush that you normally use to kind of, um, you know, beat it up and, 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 you know, work in rough surfaces, that one will help you to just remove that dust. Or you buy a, a, a cheaper brush just to kind of clean, you know, use a little, a little broom for you to clean all those edges, right? So um, go ahead and, and, and load uh, one side, especially the, the one that goes against the wall. Load it up with a little bit of paint, and then you go ahead and do the same thing. Now that you you can control the amount of paint that is already on the surface. You want to go ahead and just do those nice strokes, uh, straight strokes, knowing that you have paint on the surface. That's the most important thing when you're doing some cutting. That if you don't have paint on the surface, you you're gonna you know finish your your little line every you know four or five inches because you just run out of paint really quick. And if you put too much, you're gonna drip. Um, uh, you know, on this, on the other surface, in this case, the base molding. So those are uh, ideas that, that I always use. Those techniques are, are really good. And um, that way you avoid all that issue. So if you notice that, that I, I apply some more little extra paint on the staff, make sure that, that the, the excess uh, paint is out. And uh, once I know that I have enough paint on the surface, I go ahead and switch to the small roller and I go ahead and take care of those little brush marks again. And uh, you can get really close. If you notice, I actually got so close in this corner that I had to use a wet rag to just remove a little bit of the excess paint that was there. You may not be able to see it, but I, I went ahead and touched just a little bit. But uh, this is just to show uh, to show how close you can get with a roller and how clean is the is the the finish there. So that 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 always is is is, is, a, is a plus when you're painting. There, you need to be worry about going back and forth. So it's the same thing, you know, throughout the entire thing. Once you do the cutting, you want to go ahead and do the stuff. So that's normally what happens that I, I um, you know, I have my, my helpers doing the cutting and I go behind them painting because, the, you know, the filling of the wall, um, and I'm going to show you, is not that hard. It's these little cuttings, the ones that, you know, give you that issue. But let's say if you have a an upper molding, crown molding, this, this uh, small you know, a molding over here on the window seal, and the same thing, you apply paint fairly close to the molding, you don't want to touch the molding in the beginning, and then you, you go ahead and now that you know that you have paint on the surface, 
you uh, start from from the very beginning with a nice line um, non-stop and then you can cover two three four feet at a time in a, in a really nice way now if you have um, accidented uh, uh, surfaces like, meaning like if you have some sort of bumpy walls or uh, or cock, you you want to go um, back and forth. That way you can whatever you're not able to cut um, with one angle, you will cover it with um, the other. You know, the, when you're coming back, when you're brushing back the paint, so that's, that's something that you don't need to be frustrated because sometimes by overdoing it in one single uh, uh, direction, you will actually have a lot of paint just kind of flowing into whatever surface you're painting, and that, that will give you some frustration. So again, um, have the surface nice and, and uh, ready with some paint and change to the roller and that's it. Now we're gonna use a half inch nap roller uh, the, 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 and, uh, and uh, actually a roller frame from the same company, from Worcester. The, the frames are really strong. The, the uh, steel that they use is, is a really thick steel and you know you can buy a pack of three. It will last you for a long time, I actually, uh, rinse these 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 rollers uh, and and they last me for many months sometimes you know depending on what I'm doing um, and you know if I'm using some some uh, other projects that are a little more rough like if I'm painting uh, something outdoors or a deck or something you can actually use the the older rollers and just toss them out because you know you don't want to keep that with a lot of uh, dirt or particles of uh, in like wood chips or dust or uh, some sort of sandy material on the surface. So this is the most important technique. If you notice, I'm applying a generous amount of paint on the walls. And that is because uh, um, I have uh, two conditions that are really good. I don't have a windy room. I don't have no fans blowing. And uh, the surface is, is uh, you know, it's nice and dry. So, so sometimes and you don't want to do this in, in areas that, that, that um, are going to have a lot of wind or something if you're blowing air uh, because it will dry some veins. But if you notice, this is, this is not accelerated. I'm, I'm painting in real time over here. Those frames that you're seeing over here, this clip, is not accelerated. So you see how fast you can cover once you have paint on the surface. Um, and I encourage you to cover the entire wall from top to bottom because... That way you can control the amount of paint. You can actually maintain that nice uh, edge, and and you can actually know how much paint is is being spread on the entire surface. It's going to be uneven. So so um, I you know I pass this roller about three times. So you know the first one is to kind of spread the paint that is already on the wall. And if you notice, um, you know I get close to the the, the top, but uh, I don't have to because I already went with the roller. Uh, that will help me to, you know, if the small little roller was too thin, that this this can actually help me to thicken those cuts and avoid going back uh, on my ladder and doing all the work. But if you notice, I'm painting a, a section that is about, I will say, eight feet. Um, that that entire wall is is really long. So let's say that it's only eight feet to just kind of, you know, be uh, conservative there. But if you notice how fast I'm covering the the surface obviously I painted around the, the the outlets and the media connections and all the stuff before uh, I did all those cuts but anyway in a surface that doesn't have so many uh, outlets uh, it will be even faster so if you notice and now I'm going back uh, and making sure that uh, all the little veins that were there are, are removed uh, the paint is spread out evenly uh, I'm able to control the amount of pressure that I'm putting on the roller and, and I know that I'm, you know, spreading all the paint throughout the entire surface instead of, you know, just taking half of it or something like that and you see how fast it is. I remember that I had some criticism before, which I love. In one of my videos that I was painting a, a room and I said how to paint a, a room in 10 minutes. And people was like, oh, my God, you know, you're kind of um, just exaggerating. It's like, no, I mean, you know, as long as you have the cuts done, filling up the middle, it's, it's really fast. I mean, I, you know, I've been talking in this segment for, you know, less than two minutes and I already went through the entire thing. So uh, let me let me put it in another angle. Watch, I, I'll show you so you can actually see the rest of the wall, see how long it is. And, and you can have a perspective over here that we painted a, a huge chunk. 
So now we're going to do the same thing. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, and apply more paint on the surface and, and go ahead, you know, spread out about four or five, um, uh, I would say, uh, rollers full of uh, paint. So you don't need to, you know, stretch your, your, your work area so long. I mean, this is a, a nine feet tall ceiling. So, um, so you know, you, you, you can actually see that if you have like an eight foot, which is a standard height, it will be even even faster. So that's that's how you do it. Um, that's how you uh, maintain that 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 you know surface even. And um, you see that in this case, I have a lot of reflection from the daylight. And and that's a, a really important thing when you're painting because let's say if you don't have a lot of uh, light when you're painting, you may end up uh, leaving some thick uh, veins of like uh, overlapping paint on your on your walls, and it's gonna look really bad once you turn on your your night table or you know the lamp on the against the wall or something that is gonna give you that reflection. So that's how that's how you avoid that stuff. Now I was working against the sun, and I have to uh, you know just kind of bring up the, the, the light over here uh, exact, in, you know, in, in, a, in an exaggerated way because um, you know, I want to show you how you can work around the window as well. Now, it's an important thing that I'm, I'm applying the paint away from the window and away from that edge because I don't want to leave a lot of paint right next to the, the edges because I know that it's going to be thick. And especially, you know, when you meet in windows and things like that, you want to make sure that you can actually thin that paint um, in a nice way, and you don't you don't you don't deal with, with with paint dripping with this technique, right? So those are the important tips that I want to leave you, and you know, I, I hope these ones can can help you uh, finish your projects really well. If you're a contractor, it will be nice for you to kind of try this technique. I encourage you to do it. You know, if you have, obviously if you have more techniques, uh, you know that's uh, that's also nice. I love uh, constructive criticism, and in this uh, video, I know that uh, hopefully we're gonna have a lot of those things. So um, I'm glad that I'm able to uh, show you in this case how I will normally paint walls. Okay, thank you so much. You made it to the end of the video. I'm really happy about it. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, hit the little notification bell, and see more of those videos that I'm gonna put around, and stay tuned for more videos. I'll see you soon.